Welcome back. At the 2016 annual meetings of the African Development Bank began today at the Molugunshi International Conference Center in Lusaka, Zambia. The theme of this year's meeting is energy and climate change and draws on one of the bank's high five priority areas, which include Light Up and Power Africa. It also reflects the bank's new deal on energy and the key resolutions from the recent UN climate talks on global warming. The 2016 annual meeting's theme is aligned with two of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 7, which is to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all, and SDG 13 to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. The meetings will last till Friday, May 27. Meanwhile, the African Development Bank says Africa's economy is likely to grow 3.7% this year as resilient private consumption and investment offsets the effect of a slump in commodity prices and global headwinds. Launching its latest regional economic outlook in the Zambian capital, the AFDB also said growth could accelerate to 4.7% next year if commodity price is recovered and the global economy strengthened. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria's Monetary Policy Committee today began its two-day meeting, the third since this year, and is expected to announce the next monetary policy direction tomorrow. Now, the meeting is holding amidst what is probably the most severe combination of shocks in the economy since the start of the century, since the last meeting in March, where the committee raised the NPR by 100 basis points from 11% to 12%, the macroeconomy has taken a turn for the worse since the last MPC meeting. Economic indicators have gone from bad to worse. The MBS reported that April's headline inflation surged to 13.7% from 12.8% in March, with both the food and core components maintaining uptrend. As widely expected, first quarter 2016 real output growth came in significantly disappointing at a negative 0.36% owing to 1. reduced fiscal spending, 2. falling disposable personal income, 3. lingering fuel scarcity, low credits to private sector, falling crude oil production due to increased pipeline attacks and vandalism, and of course um, forex scarcity. Uh, many economic analysts have continued to make their predictions of what the outcome of the meeting will be considering the present economic fundamentals. Uh, the president, Time Economics Limited, Dr. Oho Okiti, joins me now from our Abuja studios to look at um, some of these issues. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Okiti. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Right. Now, looking at the macroeconomic indicators, particularly the GDP, which is really negative as at um, April, what do you think the MPC will do, particularly in the area of the foreign exchange market? Um, I think um, some measure of background is uh, very, very important here. I, uh, the last time we had... Um, a foreign exchange adjustment was sometime uh, last year. And uh, since then, we've had um, what we can call a fixed uh, official exchange rate, even though the parallel market has uh, moved uh, a bit um, uh, markedly and widely away from that. And um, I think the reason most people expect some changes is um, uh, this time around is because since last week, there's been some new pressure on the on the naira and uh, i think that stemmed from uh, um, uh, uh, the foil um, issue and also some comments related that suggested that uh, there may be some of some changes uh, so i think that's what that's where we got the renewed uh, pressure from uh, but what do i think i think first and foremost i think there's when we talk about devaluation or when we talk about exchange rate adjustment, I think it should always be within the context of a broader economic strategy. Uh, because the reason this is important is because when 
all the times we've had devaluation, we need to ask ourselves whether those devaluations have actually achieved what we, what we intended them to achieve. So if that is not the case, uh, if they have not achieved what we intended them to achieve, so we cannot carry out devaluation. I am not saying there should be devaluation or there should be some kind of foreign exchange flexibility. But it has to be done within a broader economic strategy. And when that is absent, uh, when that is absent, we will not have devaluation again, and we may not get the economic benefits of devaluation. So in essence, when the MPC decides tomorrow whether to make that adjustment or not, I do not know. But whenever it decides to make that adjustment, the assurances I want is that the fiscal, the structural, the other economic changes that we needed to make to ensure that this work should also be in place. All right. Um, well, what you're trying to say is that, well, they can take the decision to devalue, but it has to depend on some of the fundamentals in the economy to ensure that when they devalue, of course, there wouldn't be any problem. We're not going to see the exchange rate declining further at the parallel market. Now, let's look at these issues. There are two issues on the exchange rate for the committee to deal with. First is um, limiting the disparity between official and parallel market exchange rates. That is very important. And uh, secondly, reducing the effect of the exchange rate on inflation. What kind of policy position do you think the committee should take to actually achieve this dual objective? Okay, thank you for that question, uh, because it's very, very central to, um, to the arguments about devaluation. Uh, the issue of devaluation in Nigeria uh, shows that every devaluation uh, also uh, leads to pressure on further devaluation. That is a fact. Um, so we should not think for a moment that if there should be devaluation tomorrow, and that is up to the monetary policy uh, um, uh, authorities to decide that. If there should be devaluation tomorrow, we should not think for a moment that the speculation or the other factors that lead to the gap between the parallel and the official will cease. It will not. It will not. What we will see, again, will be another round of pressure on the Naira. And that may further lead to the need to further devalue in the future. So that is, that is very clear because that's what the history has taught us. There's never been a time except in times of high supply of foreign exchange. Even in those times, there's never been a time where you do not have significant gap especially in, during an economic crisis like this, there's been a gap between the official and the parallel. So if there's going to be some changes tomorrow, and um, considering the, um, the shocks in the economy in the last few months, there is, there's quite a need, I say a need for some kind of flexibility. So if that adjustment happens, uh, for those that think that the pressure on the Naira will just cease because there is now, maybe Naira is now officially... Uh, let's say 300, uh, for instance, uh, to the dollar, that the pressure will cease. No. The only thing that puts an end to the pressure is an increase in supply. So let's look at the structural issues why we do not have the supply. For instance, oil prices have been going up, but we have not been benefiting because we have shortfall in production. So that needs to be tackled very, very uh, quickly. Um, the second question you ask is in relation to prices. Most of the items or most of the goods that we import do not, do not actually have what you can call viable alternatives. Viable alternatives. So there is no way at the moment that we can actually put an end to what I call imported inflation via the exchange rate. That is not going to happen anytime soon. So we'll continue to see inflation either going up or at least remain at the kind of level that we have seen it in the last few months. Now, just before I let you go, um, Dr. Okiti, now from what you have mentioned, what happens to loosening, you know, the forest restriction 
you know, by the CBN. We've seen a, a lot of that. If they come up with, uh, you know, liberalizing the foreign exchange market and perhaps losing the restriction, particularly uh, the parallel market, do you think this can actually help to mitigate some of these things? I mean, wh when this, this argument is, uh, is theoretically beautiful, um, uh, let's losing the let's losing that and let's losing that. These are very very fine arguments, but let's go to the why do why are we in this situation? The reason we are we are in this situation is because we are not earning enough dollars for the economy. So when you say liberalize, um, nobody goes further to say okay liberalize for this sector, do not liberalize for this sector. You know so. The CBN and the fiscal authorities are saying, look, inputs for the reset are our concern at the moment. And that is where we want to divert the, um, uh, the foreign exchange that we have. You know? Nobody has argued that, okay, this is not the best way to do it. But if you don't have something, you can't give it. You know? And if people are looking at the $27 billion and say looking at it as something that is tangible, that is not tangible in the scheme of things. That's one. Secondly, I have no doubt in my mind that if you put that same $27 billion in the market in just one week or two weeks, that $27 billion will be swallowed up. So the problem, the problem, and this is where we should focus our attention, the problem is that we do not have adequate foreign exchange. So it is not about what you do with it or what you don't do with it. I don't think those things really will have much effect. And when those changes come, the changes that people expect, and I suspect that there will be some kind of flexibility, maybe not tomorrow, maybe sometime soon, maybe within the next one month. And I agree there should be because of the shocks that we have seen in the economy in the last few months. But I am just saying that except we begin to earn more dollars in significant we we will not end the problem, not anytime soon. All right, thank you very much for your thoughts, Dr. Okiti. Let's just hope for the best when they come off this meeting tomorrow. Thank you for your time. That was Dr. Okiti, the president, Time Economics London. Well, we'll take a quick break now. When we return, we'll look at what's happening at the debt market. Do stay with us. <laughs>